Hi, Gary Stearman. We're recording this on April the 18th, a Wednesday, and uh, we wish you well today. I am holding in my hands here a, a news release, datelined the 18th of April, from Reuters. The headline, Belief in God Grows as Mortality Nears according to a recent survey. In other words, the older you get, the more likely you are to believe in God. And uh, this was sent to me, and uh, I thought, you know, this is worth a commentary uh, on the basis of what it says about the day in which we live. Let me read a few lines from this Reuters news report. <clears throat> and I quote, Belief in God is highest among older people and increases with age perhaps due to the growing realization that death is coming closer, according to the University of Chicago research staff. Summarizing data from uh, surveys performed in 1991, 1998, and 2008 in 30 countries from Chile to Japan, the university's National Opinion Research Center found that on average 43% of those aged 68 and older were certain that God exists. By comparison, an average 23% of people aged 27 and younger were firm believers in God, according to the report, which gathered data from International News Survey Program, a consortium of the world's leading opinion survey organizations. <clears throat> 68 and older, you're 43% uh, percent likely to believe that God exists. 27 and younger, you are 23% likely to believe that God exists. And here's a quote from one of the researchers. Looking at differences in age groups, the largest increase in the belief of God most often occurs uh, among those around 58 years of age and older. This suggests that a belief in God is especially likely to increase among the oldest groups, perhaps in response to the uh, increasing anticipation of mortality. So, you have to fear death <laughs> in order to come to a belief in God. What a strange idea that is. You know, uh, I would uh, attribute those statistics to something else. Secular schooling, which has become dominant in the last 50 years uh, in the world, not just the United States. Uh, and I would remind you that in the 19th and 20th centuries in America, the readers, like McGuffey readers uh, and so forth, and maybe many of you have copies of those old readers, actually featured Scripture, believe it or not. Kids were required to memorize Scripture in school. And when I was uh, but a young man in school, I, I remember that the Gideons passed out Bibles in school, and nobody had a word of objection. In fact, they thought it was a great uh, tribute uh, to the idea of graduation, going out in the world, and uh, depending on God, here's a Bible to take with you as you go. And so at graduation ceremonies uh, when I was a kid, hey, they passed out McGuffey readers. Big difference, and uh, made a big difference, by the way, in how one perceives God. Remember back in the 60s, prayer in public schools became a huge issue, and it was banned on the basis that, uh, well, we wouldn't want to offend those who don't believe, therefore, nobody can pray in school. And, and I can recall when that was a big news item. The Bible, in a couple of places, says something interesting. Uh, in, in the first uh, quote that I'm going to read, Psalm 13, uh, that is Psalm 14, pardon me, it says, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. <clears throat> they are corrupt. They've done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They're all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. In other words, this is man's natural state to turn to his own devices and to turn away from God. That was Psalm 14. Uh, I'll move forward now to Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Wow. It's an absolute repeat. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. 
And by the way, if you go to public school today, there's some chance that you might not understand what abominable iniquity means because they're not teaching words like that anymore, just like they're not teaching the Bible <laughs> in public school. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity, and there is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of man to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Every one of them is gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. And there it is, the indictment that, that rolls on century after century as, uh, as each generation forgets God. You know, there's an old saying, and I strongly believe it. The old saying is, God has no grandchildren. And by that, I mean to say that if you expect your children to become godly just because you were godly, uh, you're entertaining a false hope. Each generation must discover God on its own. And, and that's the whole idea here. Uh, we've gone now for three or four generations without teaching God, particularly in the public schools, and we have the statistics. On average, 23% of the people aged 27 and younger were fir firm believers in God. Only 23% and declining, I might add. And so you have that assessment of society from the Bible. You have another assessment of latter-day society that mirrors and echoes these ideas. In 2 Timothy 3, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And that word perilous or grievous is one of the most dynamic Greek uh, words in the entire Greek vocabulary. It is chalepas, and it means uh, grievous or horrible or terrible or even ragingly insane. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, coveters, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power of such. Hmm. Denying the power thereof from such turn away. That's the way Paul concludes this this list of uh, social conditions, if you will, social breakdown in a few words. And today, that's pretty much the conversation on everybody's minds. They look at what was a genteel and mild-mannered uh, conciliatory America, and they note that today in the media, in the press, and other places, uh, vile <coughs> and confrontative uh, words are the order of the day. Society has, has become less and less genteel, less and less civilized, less and less, if you will, spiritual, and more and more accusatory in its ways. And I think we know the reason why. Oh, fascinating to read this Reuters news release about a study. Again, it was done by the University of Chicago, and they discovered that a belief in God has decreased in younger people. But it seems to increase in older people who are approaching mortality. Hmm. You know, you could die tomorrow. <laughs> you don't have to be 60 or 70 years old. Mortality can come upon you like that something to think about. You know, God is waiting for you to say, here I am. And by the way, things are happening fast these days, so keep looking up. Mm -hmm.